We are now able to make capital budgeting decisions based on two of the most widely used approaches, the net present value rule and the internal rate of return rule. In our example from earlier with Alpha's new shipbuilding plant, the indications provided by both the NPV and the IRR techniques coincided. Both methods showed that the investment opportunity the company had was to be taken. In fact, the NPV and IRR rules will point in the same direction anytime projects are independent. That is, when the decision to invest in one particular project does not affect the decision of whether to carry out another. So, in this case, Alpha's project was independent. But what happens when projects are mutually exclusive? To recall, two or more projects are mutually exclusive when a company must choose only one of them. This happens very often in practice. Usually, firms have limited budgets and are forced to allocate scarce resources. For example, a company could face a situation in which it must invest either in developing an e-commerce channel or in hiring 200 additional sales personnel to boost B2B sales. Since the IRR is a measure of the expected return of investing in a project, we might be tempted to use the IRR rule when evaluating mutually exclusive projects and pick the project with the highest IRR. Intuition would tell us that the investment with the higher internal rate of return is to be preferred. Unfortunately, despite being helpful at times, intuition isn't always right, so this approach could potentially lead to faulty conclusions. When we deal with mutually exclusive projects, we need to rank them from the most profitable project to the least profitable one. This is when NPV and IRR can cause a headache, giving conflicting rankings. They can be in disagreement, when we compare different sized projects, and also when the projects produce cash flows that have a different timing. Let's provide an example. Consider the following situation. We are offered to take one of two mutually exclusive investment opportunities, starting a bookstore or a restaurant business. The required rate of return of both projects is identical, 10%. The initial investment for the bookstore is equal to $400,000. On the other hand, to open a restaurant, we'll need twice as much, $800,000. You can see the cash flows associated with both investments in the following timelines. The restaurant investment is considerably larger, but at the same time, this project would result in larger cash flows since the very beginning. How do we choose which investment opportunity is preferable? Let's calculate the IRR and the NPV of both projects and rank them accordingly. By substituting all known parameters into the respective formulas, we obtain the following results for the bookstore project. Don't feel intimidated by these equations. We used a financial calculator that allows us to find out easily that the NPV is equal to $547,697, while the investment's IRR is 56%. Now let's do the same procedure for the restaurant project. In the end, we obtain that its NPV equals $811,084, and its IRR is 45%. Great! Now we can rank the projects according to the results that have been obtained. As you can see, the rankings for IRR and NPV are conflicting. Both projects have IRRs that exceed their respective cost of capital of 10%. The restaurant investment has a lower IRR because it requires a significant amount of capital, $800,000 versus $400,000. On the other hand, it generates a higher NPV, $811,084, versus $547,697. Both endeavors are profitable, but we have to select only one of them. This situation illustrates an important deficiency of IRR. Since by definition, this is a return measurement, we cannot say how much value will be created without knowing the scale of the investment. Naturally, when we double the cash flows of one of the investments, it is worth twice as much. As a result, its NPV doubles. However, the IRR remains unaffected by the size of the investment because it measures the average return of the project. That's why using this technique proves insufficient when it comes to comparing projects of different size. So, how do we choose between different sized mutually exclusive investments? As a rule, we should always prioritize NPV over IRR, as the net present value reflects properly the size of all cash flows related to a project. That's why in this case, we should pick the restaurant investment as it will result in a stronger increase in wealth compared to the bookstore business. When we compare different projects, it's always useful to construct their NPV profiles. The following graph depicts the NPVs of both alternatives for different discount rates. 
You might also notice that the restaurant project has a higher NPV for discount rates lower than 33.3%, while the bookstore would be more profitable when the discount rate is higher than this percentage. The NPV profiles of both projects intersect at a point called the crossover rate, where the NPVs of the two projects are equal. In such cases, we usually stay indifferent regarding either of the investment opportunities. That is, we don't choose any of them. When cash flows are discounted at the 10% required rate of return, it becomes clear that the restaurant project has a superior NPV and that we should choose it over the opportunity to open a bookstore. All right. Please bear in mind that even though two investments can have similar scales, the IRR might still rank them incorrectly because of differences in their cash flow timing. Let's consider an example. Here's the following scenario. Projects A and B have similar scales. Both of them require an initial investment of $200,000. The timing of cash flows is different. The cash inflows of Project A come earlier, while the investors in Project B have to wait longer until they see any revenues coming in. The required rate of return for both projects is 10%. Right. Let's calculate the NPV and IRR for each of the two cases. For Project A, we have an NPV of $90,909 and an IRR of 60%, while Project B produces an NPV of $127,846 and an IRR of 24%. As you can see, we are dealing with the same problem as earlier. The NPV of Project B is larger, while its IRR is lower. How do we decide which project is preferable in this case? Once again, we should prioritize the NPV over IRR and invest in Project B. The reason is simple. The IRR method assumes that the reinvestment rate is the internal rate of return. For Project A, it's 60%, which is difficult to achieve. On the other hand, the NPV method suggests reinvestment at the opportunity cost of capital. This is a much more realistic and economically relevant assumption because it incorporates the market-determined opportunity cost of capital as a discount rate. Therefore, the NPV is actually the net change in shareholders' wealth after choosing a particular investment. And this is what we need to know. At the end of the day, investors are interested in the absolute amount of wealth generated by a given project. Great! 